Right, another question from the Maths Camp for Advanced Tire. Question 123, another proof by induction, this time involving matrices. Given a matrix A with the elements A, A minus 1, 0 and 1, show that A to the N would be a matrix with the elements A to the N, A to the N minus 1, 0 and 1. If you have a matrix A, which is equal to A, A minus 1, 0, 1, then A to the N would equal A to the N, A to the N minus 1, 0, 1. Now, same as before. <coughs> Check that it's going to be true to start with. Check for N equals 1 that it actually works. Right, if N equals 1, using this expression, that means taking the left hand side, I would have A to the 1. But I know that A to the 1 is this. So a to the 1 would be a, a minus 1, 0, 1. Check the right-hand side, this part here. The right-hand side would be, replacing the n by 1, would be a to the 1, a to the 1 minus 1, 0, 1. Which is just the same as a, a to the power 1 is just a, a minus 1, 0, 1. They're both the same, which means it's true, for n equals 1. Right, that's us started. We're on the road, definitely wants to begin with. Now, jump ahead a bit. Make a little assumption here. Assume that it's true at some arbitrary point k. This is called the inductive hypothesis. It's true, assume it's true at some point k. Well, that would mean that if that were true, and that's just an if, if that were true, then a to the k should turn out to be just replacing the n by k's, a to the k, a to the k minus 1, 0, 1. I'll call that 1 just now. <coughs> That's the inductive hypothesis. I've got to call that into play if I'm doing a proof by induction. And then consider the next one. I think I'm hitting the bottom here, haven't I? Consider the case for n equals k plus 1. Now for n equals k plus 1, and I'll have to go back up to the top, unfortunately. I don't have to rub all that out, but I'll leave this little part in here that I'm going to use again. But that means if I'm considering a to the k, but I've got to think, so what happens if I've got a to the k plus 1? Well, that would certainly be a times a to the k. And I know that a was a, a minus 1, 0, 1. And calling the hypothesis into play, a to the k should be a to the k, a to the k minus 1, 0, 1 using the statement 1. Right, I've used that. So, out you go, because I'm afraid I need your space <coughs> to clear the table, take your plates, off you go. Right, so for this part, now we've got a big, well, it's not a big matrix multiplication, but it is a matrix multiplication. There are two rows, there'll be two rows of answers. There are two columns here, there'll be two columns of answers. There's going to be four answers. Just a quick reminder, you may well know, but just to remind you again, the first row times the first column will give me my first answer. So the first row would be an A, we'll spell it all out, an A times an A to the K, plus, moving along, an A minus 1 times 0. That was times 0, that was handy. Next one's got more terms in it. First row times second column for the entry in the first row, second column. So I've got A times both of these. Well, I'll spell it out, well, I'll put it down. So I've got A times a to the k, minus an a. Let me move this bracket along a bit, just widen it. <coughs> More seats required. Plus a minus 1 times 1. So plus a minus 1. Next bit's easier. Bottom row answers come from bottom row. First row, first column, first column. So nothing times that is nothing. 1 times nothing is nothing. So the is 0. For bottom row, last column, to get the bottom row, last column, along the row, down the column. Nothing times that is nothing. 1 times 1 is 1. Tidy this up. Well, a to the k times another a means there's one more factor, so it'll be k plus 1. Same with this one. And another factor of a will knock it up to k plus 1, minus 1, 0, 1. And there we are. That's what I had to start with. 
Well, I need to rub this out, sorry. Because the thing that you had to prove was, you had to prove that a to the n equaled a to the n, a to the n minus 1, 0, 1. Which means that if I have the same pattern as that for a to the k plus 1, where all the n's are replaced by k plus 1's, and indeed they are, then it's worked. Which means that if it were true for n equals k, then it certainly would be true for the next one. But since, and again, sorry, I've got the top here, but since it was true at the very start, since it was true for n equals 1, that means it's going to be true for all n where n were from the natural numbers and n was greater than or equal to 1, thus proving it by induction. Right, again, see the next one. We've still got 1.24. The next short video will have the last question at 1.24.